want to share a few thoughts in regards to being bulletproof to the pains of dating and relationships so that you don't get emotionally hung up by every single comment, response, or outcome of a dating relationship. And this illustration that I want to use in this regard comes from my father-in-law who once used this as a part of a message that he was giving at a youth conference. When God highlighted this young woman a few rows back, seated in the middle, wanting him to speak a particular message to him. And so God prompted him to give this $20 bill illustration. And so he just so happened to have a, in his wallet a $20 bill. And so he takes out the $20 bill and he holds it up before the crowd. And he says, how many of you would want this $20 bill? And of course, all their hands shoot up. And then he, so then he, he crumples up the $20 bill. And he says, now how many of you would want this $20 bill? And of course, all their hands still shoot up. So he throws it down on the ground. He says, now how many? Of course, all the hands shoot up. So he stomps on it really hard and grinds it into the carpet with the shoe. And he says, now how many of you would want this $20 bill after it's been crumpled up, thrown down, stomped on, and kicked around in this carpet? How many of you would want this $20 bill? And all their hands shoot up. And so he goes down to this woman, the, this young woman that got it highlighted, and he says, why? He kind of unravels the, the, the $20 bill. He says, why, why would you still want this $20 bill? after it's been crumpled down, thrown down, kicked around, everything. And, and she says, well, because I can still use it. Its value hasn't changed. And he goes, exactly. That's what God wants you to know, is that no matter what anybody has said to you, no matter what anybody has done to you, or how anybody has treated you, that your value never changes. That that's the key to being bulletproof to the pains of dating and relationships so that you're not emotionally attached to every response or rejection is because your value, worth, and dignity is anchored in Jesus Christ. And it never wavers, never changes, and that allows you to be able to enter into relationships out of a place of fullness rather than a place of emptiness, and that changes everything. Did you know that one of the most fundamental aspects of dating is uncertainty reduction? That's right, so your role in this is to display and communicate your values, beliefs, attitudes, likes, and dislikes in a way that helps that other person reduce their uncertainty about you. And in turn, you're asking questions, you're observing, and you're discerning in such a way to be able to understand and reduce your uncertainty about them. And that is when you come to a true, genuine understanding of the level of compatibility that is actually present. Here's something you may not know about dating apps. Dating apps carry with it something that social psychologists refer to as the paradox of choice. The paradox of choice states that people enjoy and really crave having options and choices. But the reality is when we have too many options and too many choices, we ultimately become less happy and more doubtful about the decisions that we end up making. So here you are on these dating apps swiping away, and you might find somebody that you would have really been happy and content with, but instead you're on the prowl and the search for this same kind of person, but a slightly better looking version, or a little bit smarter, or a little bit more athletic, or successful, or a little bit more artistic. So here you have a person you would have been content and satisfied with, but instead you keep scrolling for the 2.0 version of this person, and it ultimately sours some of those decisions that you make, and ultimately makes the experience that more frustrating in the process. One thing that I've noticed about human nature is that we love a good pendulum swing, am I right? Like we love to go from one extreme clear to the other. And we do this in, in relationships and marriage as well, is that for the vast majority of humankind is that there was arranged marriages where the mother, the father, the family and community had all the say in who this young person would marry and they had very little to no say. Well, now the pendulum has swung clear to the other side where it's all individualistic. It's all upon the shoulders of these two people involved with very little input and say from the family and the community. What we need to do is bring the pendulum back somewhere to the middle where yes, you can have the individual freedom of choice for yourself, but you also very much include the wisdom and the wise counsel of your family and your community. And that's how you end up with the best possible selection for marriage.